in and you don't have the room for that stair, that's where the appeal will come into play. Right. And what they're going to want is you can't go out a window, you have to turn that window into a door. You can't come down the set of stairs with 24 inches wide, 8 and 8 rise and run. They want you to come out 36 inches wide, 7 to 11, all the way down to the ground. That's how simple it is. Now, whether or not it's going to be a fire escape or a, uh, a stair, which means they may want you to cover it with a cover. They may want a cake plate on it, which will accumulate snow. So there's all these kind of things. But traditionally, nationwide, what you get on these residential situations where you haven't met the second means of egress and you try to satisfy the insurance, it's the door becomes, I mean, the window becomes a door. The fire escape must be at least three feet wide. It's 7 Eleven rise and run all the way to the ground, and it usually picks up the second floor while you're there. So, spirals, what do you use a spiral? In our system, officially, never. Never. But if you've exhausted all means and you're limited in, in space, guess what you can throw in there? With approval from the building department and the fire department, spiral. But if you have a big backyard, guess what you'll never have? Fire. But if you have a, uh, just no space, you can go back down to a ladder and or a spiral. Otherwise, you're never, you're never going to get approved. Pre-existing, you just have to examine them and test them. And we're at the end. We're, this is the end. Guess what the people think this is a means of egress? <laughs> is a bag ladder means of egress? People think they are. They're not. This is a third means of egress. So you can have a bag ladder in your, in, your, in, your, in your closet, and you can hook it to your window and throw it out the window, but it's not an approved second means of egress. Okay? So some people think it is, and that's what they've been getting away with. It's not. Yeah. Even those ladders you can buy from John, Johnny, you know what I'm saying? The aluminum ladders you self-install, they're not a second means of egress. They're a third means of egress. Okay? So they're not an approved means of egress. An approved means of egress is a balcony and a full set of stairs <laughs> to the ground. In most cases, what we're looking at in the city of Portland, when people are looking for those fire escape ladders and or the pop out ladder that they've had there, they're just enhancing their means of egress out of the second floor window, which according to the city of Portland, you can jump. They're using a high... I was going to show, no. <laughs> gonna show you the, the, the two pieces that are out there, the bag ladder system and then the, the ones for the 22 story fire escape uh, systems that they have available. But right now, since it's just fire escape, I just want to open it up. We've got about 10 minutes. What kind of questions does, do the inspectors have for the engineers in the room? What kind of questions do the vendors who repair these fire escapes and paint these fire escapes have for the engineers and for the city? What kind of questions does the city have for some of the engineers and some of the vendors? Let's open it up. What's a, what, what's a building owner looking at in, in Comstock? I mean, Let's go to Portland. We've got FX here, right? Five story, typical, 20 feet across. You know, uh, full full refurb, full paint job with a can leave it to the ground, and, and you can use a ten thousand dollar plus minus on it. And I'm talking about ten thousand. It's not uncommon to spend forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars on something. The things. structure hasn't been touched in forty years. Yeah, yeah. full refurb. Right. So you're five floors. Five floors. Or five platforms. Five platforms and a can leave it to the ground. How much? Seventy-five to hundred thousand. Seventy-five. So it's about twenty grand a floor. So if you figure as a plus minus in size, it could be 10 to 20 grand a floor. So they consider the cantilever and a piece of a, a piece of a platform already in one floor. Then a stair plus another. So each floor is a, is a platform and a stair. So 10 to 20 grand per. Don't forget, full structural and a paint job. So a five floor or six floor building, maybe a 10 units, uh, say it's residential. At 10 units of four, so he's got 60 units, and he's probably getting a thousand dollars, even if it's subsidized, thousand dollars a unit. And so you're you're going there, and giving him a, a number that just blows his mind when he looks at his revenue stream. That's right. why you get all the resistance. Yeah, yep. I mean, we're getting the resistance just about the engineering fees. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it, the saddest part of, of where we've come in the five-year rotation on this thing. The way our system is set up right now, it's a hard five years. And that's not where I was hoping to see us go. I would like to reserve the right as the authority on jurisdiction uh, to be able to say, this one sucks eggs, we need to do it. I know it's only five years, but we need to do it. For the ones that have been completely referred, overhauled, ground up, tested and everything, how long will it probably be before we need to do that again? That's 
I would like to see that time frame actually be more relaxed with the authority having jurisdiction and retaining the right to be able to order it at any time. But our frequency for the hard, fast code frequency being in the 15, 20, 25 year range. For the low test. You know, 25 year cycle made sense to me. And yeah. Cisco and well, that's what we need nationwide. Extending your time frame along with the, uh, the Tacoma model or whatever, where they're doing the maintenance, year. he has to do the yearly certification on his own. And that might be a, a piece that will work into our system as well. Yeah. Uh, it's, and if I'm, I'm not real thrilled with where we're at right now, but I'm pleased that we're actually making progress and our guys are actually being able to tell people, get it looked at, get it fixed. We've given a couple of extensions uh, in time to a couple of occupancies. One of them being a three-story three wood structure, one level of fire escape from the third floor down. The owners occupy the third floor. They're renting out the other two floors, four units total. They don't make enough money to pay for this load test. And we're looking at it, it's attached to a wood wall and we're gonna throw how many pounds per square foot on this thing? Are you sure you want to go there? So one of your associates is actually arguing that point with the city and trying to figure out a way to modify the load for this type of structure because it doesn't make sense. Nobody, and it's just, you know, nobody in the United States, I'm never aware of anybody double loading it, ever. It's only Portland that, and in Eugene, it, it went totally out of control and we, we everybody, as an engineer in Eugene, has has sort of stepped back because it's, it's just totally out of control. Not only do they want it repaired, they want it low test, uh, they want it reverse engineered. So it, it all depends, everybody sort of get their heads around this thing, but I, I've been at this for 40 years, and what I have is a, probably one of the largest libraries of data of, of fire escape, five year cycle of information. All you have to remember when you, it's all about connection management. Every fire escape that you get, as soon as you take apart any connection, clean it, prime it. Inject it with 35 to 50 year silicone. Close it, goop it up, put the bolt in tight. And then you paint the fire escape. You make sure the client keeps it painted. They're supposed to spot paint it every three to five years. They're supposed to fully paint it every five to seven years because you read a Rust-Oleum can that says to do what after seven years? Do it all over again. So you don't guarantee the paint job to anybody because you're painting all over fire escapes. There's no, but structurally, the national norm on our side is we give them a 10 year structural warranty because you've silicone, you get connection management. You seal the connections. The client keeps the rest of the thing. And you go to any fire escape, between two connections, the bar is perfect. There's nothing wrong with the bar. But as soon as it hits a joint or a corner, what happens? It accumulates leaves, bird poo, dust, anything. What happens? It just it grows to what you have there because it's a it's trapped. So connection management is, and it's in, I think it's in your writings, you must put something in there for water intrusion. And that is very simple. It's 35 year latex silicone because it's paintable, or it's 50 year silicone, black for example, but it's non paintable. The problem with that is sometimes when you put it on and yeah, you try to paint it later on, it won't accept paint. So we tend to use the 35 year latex silicone because it's paintable, but it's, it's all about connection management. You get the 10 year warranty on the, on the structural that should be given by any vendor doing anything for these clients. That makes these guys happy that the thing is, gonna, is guaranteed to continue. And, and get that 25, 15 to 25 year cycle on the load testing that he's gonna be forcing, or 15 to 25 years from now, a fire escape that was fully refurbished today, 25 years from now, do I have to load test it or can I change all the fasteners? Change all the fasteners. Change all the fasteners, I avoid what then? Load test and I get brand new bolts in it, which is what? Other evidence of strength, which is what? That's all you worry about. Verification of the wall, which is an unknown, change all your fasteners, so you want a low test, go ahead. But it's it's crazy wackiness, you know, helicopter dropping in bags of sand from un inaccessible locations, or just refurbish these fire escapes that have never been refurbished in their entire lives. Change the change the, the hex heads, change the, the, the rivets, or if there's room there, create backup bolts on the same areas. And every welded connection, guys, how much are they worth? No, they're a million dollars. They're a million dollars. Every well that you let go and you eyeball it and you sign the name on it, it's a million bucks. Okay? Now that's proof. That's the, you know, I've got a master's degree in reverse stupidity. I don't know how to do it right. I know all the wrong way to do it. I've been doing it wrong for 40 years and I eliminated all the, all the wrong ways to do it and we finally came to what we have here.
And we just have a few more to go. Any uh, any more questions? Because you guys, that was a very good question. I just wonder, is there much of a trend for getting rid of fire escapes? I mean, is there much of a push just to get rid of them? I, 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 I can answer that, right? Because you got to try to answer that. And the answer is, they're going to be around forever. Because everybody's trying to get rid of them. You have some of these crazy buildings. Unless you build a brand new, the only reason why you have a crazy building in any old town that can still be used, residential, commercial, loft space, whatever, is because you have a fire escape. You try to meet that 75 foot rule and you try to tear out the inside and put a stair here and a stair over there that doesn't conflict with the hysterical committee and you know what I'm saying? By the time, it's gonna be cheaper to knock it down and then somebody's gonna freak out because the facade is gone. And the, you, guys, you guys gotta stop hugging fire escapes because they're the crate, they're the bastard child of egress and they satisfy every old building's requirements for egress, even for a clock tower. So they're not going away. Everybody wants to get rid of them, but they don't realize that the only reason why every crazy building, factory, garage, outhouse is being occupied, treehouse is being occupied, is because the fire escape was the answer in 1900. It's the answer today to some of these row houses that have, what, 20 feet and the staircase on the side. And it used to be a single family five story, but now it's five condos. What's the answer? It's the fire escape in the back, and a lot of them don't even have ladders or uh, staircases. They have connecting balconies because they cross a firewall. That was the first fire escape, was balconies crossing firewalls where you walked over to your neighbor's window and kicked it in. That was your means of egress. I'm saying so fire escapes are not going anywhere. They're around. So the only thing is for engineers and for everybody, you start dealing with connection management, the rest of it will take care of itself. And if for 10, 15 years the clients don't paint it, don't do anything, guess what this guy throws out? Low test. Yep. Any other questions? These are great questions. I just observed low testing is not all that expensive. Yours and my experience might be different. The connections are expensive. Yep. The, the work on the, the fire escape is where the expense comes in. That's expensive. And then when you, some of the owners are not bothering to listen to the last part about cleaning and painting. And that is a major push under our program now. Uh, the current procedures that we've got, you guys are now, congratulations, you won the bid. You have my sympathy. Now you get to drop the plans for your <laughs> testing and or refurbishment, go down to the Bureau of Development Services and enter into their permit process, which if you have not individually done it or anyone from your office has been dealing with it and they haven't told you that there's a problem with the fee calculation, send the same person each and every time is what I'm hearing and watch the fee calculation and then go through it and then recalculate it and make sure they did it right because one particular outfit has been saving somewhere around 25 to 50% on every freaking permit because they're pushing the point on the calculation. So, not that there's a problem down there, but it sure sounds like there might be. If I may, I want to throw the cost with it. Some people think that it's more costly to load test a fire escape, uh, or it might be more costly to change the fasteners, right? Uh, I think it's going to be a balance depending on each one. So, right now, remember this. The testing company is only doing what the engineers wrote up as a, as a load test criteria. And you stick me in an alleyway between two buildings where nothing can get my sandbags in there. I can't get a crane in there. And this has to be all done gingerly walking on the camel's back with the last straw that I'm bringing up there. Who's taking all the liability there? Is it the testing company or the engineer who generated a, a load testing criteria submitted to the city official for a proper way to do this, satisfying OSHA, building permits, fire officials, because what could happen if there's a, if it passes? What happens? Yay, check cash, bang. What happens when it fails? What do we have? Fire trucks, police department, news crews, and guess who's, who is, who, who's gonna get sued first? If it's me getting low testing of Farscape based on your criteria that you told me, you should have warned me that there was no access. We should have told me that, I, you know, if I have to physically, you know, it's the guy sawing on a limb, you know, he's sawing on a limb. You know, I'm like, is this safe? Yeah, come on, just keep cutting. <laughs> it's okay. You know what I'm saying? So this whole bag thing, so just remember, when you're low testing, you're not directly connected to the client. The engineer has submitted a repair criteria. Uh, uh, he submits a repair criteria, which is what he signs off on, that was done. And he also submits a low test criteria. 
So the, the guy's carrying the stick. So sometimes when you look at it, when, when it can be done with a cherry picker and it can be done properly and there's, you know, you, you back up the, 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 the load testing with some supports above holding cases that collapse. There's so much to do it right way because you know what we do? Not everybody's doing it correctly. It's, it's sort of like the best guess, you know, what's really safe, kind of, but it's, it's so wacky because nobody's ever really done it. There's, if you look anywhere to go find a load test criteria for fire escape, for bridges there exists, but for fire escape, you can't find it. It's made up on the spot, and the liability lies with you. And if anything happens, let's go together to the court because I'm going to say, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I, I only visit what this guy told me. Yeah. So all of that stuff's coming along. What we're looking at right now in the permit process as you guys go through and you're working on and you're finishing everything up, our friends at the Bureau of Development Services are going to be giving their final approval. Once they've given that and put it into their track system, which stands for something and they call it Amanda, whatever, their permit tracking system. I'm going and looking at that. Hopefully you're sending a copy of the affidavit to them and to me, to our office. Um, right now they end up landing on my file. Uh, I verify that it's fine out down there, then I come out and I do the final visual for our office. If it has not been cleaned and painted, it will be cleaned and painted. That's one of the reasons why it's landed on my desk instead of everybody's desks. They said, okay, we're going to consolidate this and try and coordinate it. So that is a piece of the puzzle that's going to prolong the agony if that hasn't been built into the system for that particular client. Um, once we've got eyes on saying she's clean, she's painted, all the minor repairs appear to have been taken care of, all the major repairs are signed off by our friends at PDS, via you guys, then I'm going to be putting all that stuff together, and that's when these little green signs come out, and we'll get hung on. Uh, that's all part and parcel of the current design program. Uh, In progress. Yeah, it's, it's an ongoing work of art. Uh, there are things within this document. Yeah, you're the most advanced, advanced guys. You're the most advanced on this. Yeah. Uh, there are still things that need to be fixed. I think we still say uh, welding is the preferred method of repair. That needs to be struck and removed. Uh, oh, the, we've had discussions. Million dollars, a million dollars. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's just those things that are there. No hammers uh, allowed. Hammers are still allowed. Uh, that's, that that becomes a, a part a of. Part? What's, what do you mean by hammer? A beam, basically, with your ping pong. I thought there was somewhere. In there. No, but that's that's for the engineers. That's who's that's that's for you guys. The ends of it. Yeah, that's my guys are not going to be doing any oh, yeah, testing yeah. anymore. We yeah. used it to go back over a little bit of the. The history of how we got here, the fire escapes were built. They were gorgeous. They were beautiful. It was the answer to God's little problem here in Portland. Well, that was a great idea, too. Then they sat there, and they sat there, and they sat there, and somebody finally said, you know, this fire escape's looking pretty bad. We should go out and check it. So they went out, and they checked it. And that's their test. And before I came into the office, which is way freaking long ago, we actually had about a 300 pound member who was assigned testing of fire escapes. Mm -hmm. And he went out and jumped on the freaking fire escapes. <laughs> a, I wouldn't have wanted to be on the rescue crew responding to pick his sorry buns up after he crashed, but thankfully he never did break any of them so badly that he ended up on the ground. His name was Charlie, I know his last name too, but um, that was before I came in. When I came in, they handed me a 16 ounce claw hammer and said, go beat on that fire escape. Three steps in a row went out from under me because my directions were to start at the top, come over the gooseneck of the ladder, come down the fireman's ladder, get on the top balcony, come down the steps and beat on, ping pong them as I'm coming down. And I had three steps in a row go out from under me that I had not ping jumped. I landed on a deck because they were the last three steps in the flight. Didn't please me at all. That sucker had more orange tape on it than you could believe could go onto a fire escape. It was all gone the next day because the building owner didn't like the orange surveyor's tape. And back then we didn't have cell phones, so I stopped at the payphone right at the corner of that building and I called my boss and said, so what do we do now? Because now he's removed not only all the safety flagging for the tenants, he's removed all the safety flagging for the firefighters. And I'm going, this ain't gonna stand. <laughs> But I have no attitude issues about this. Uh, so that was 
the next evolution of what we did. We continued for about 15 years beating all the PWIs out of every connection on those fire escapes. We busted a lot of stuff. They were repaired either with welding or bolts, but we didn't require complete repair. Just repair of the stuff that was broken. And we told them to look for other points that were there. There's a lot of rust jacking that was brought up and, and shown. We did a lot of it. We also required sandblasting and painting at that point. The research that we put into it was that if you did hand prep using power grinders or hand scraping and then painted it, you got two to three years, two and a third years is what the paint tests resulted in before you had started having paint failure. If you sandblasted it to SSPC6, which is a near white clean steel, you could get 10 and a third years. So when we see a really crappy looking fire escape, we'll tell them to sandblast. We want that sucker taken clear down clean so the next time you paint it, it's going to be a good paint job for a long time to come. The EPA standards now. The EPA standards say now you can't sandblast it, so you're <laughs> going to have to hand scrape this puppy down, get everything off, and then take it to SSPC6. However, you had to do that. Very At that point, you can probably sandblast. So once you got rid of all the land, <laughs> yeah, you know, you let so it. That's, that's only a minor cost increase. So we got into all that stuff, we were there. Then we got into the load testing, and we stepped away as an office, and that was a result, direct result of two of our members in the office um, that fought for about four years to get our firefighters, our inspectors, away from having to take a hammer out and beat them. That's where we're at. So now you guys have the opportunity of, if you got a question, beat the whole loop and be was out of it. I highly recommend the hammer test. We used a 24 ounce ball peen for most of my career, mostly because the 32 ounce was too heavy. That was why we had the 24 ounces. Uh, but we were just doing the initial site testing. We've had people with needle guns, uh, which is a real cool air, air powered gun that has all these little rods in the end of it. Can you just vroom, beat the Holy Wind Peewiz out of those connections, knock a lot of the rust out by doing it. Great. Unfortunately, they were just not taking the step out, removing the tread, cleaning it, putting everything together, and caulking it. They were simply needle gunning all the rust that they could get out, out. Then they'd throw a bunch of primer in there and try and bolt that thing closer together and paint it. So not quite as good a seal as what uh, we're talking about here today. So there are some improvements that have come along, some nice steps there. One of the biggest questionable improvements is the permit process. And you have my sympathy for having to deal with that, but that's what we've got right now. Uh, BDS is trying. And I'm sure that they'll eventually get their permit process figured out to where it's a real smooth, easy process. And that each of the engineers, as you guys come up with a system that you're using for your load testing and or anything else, you're going to be able to put this thing together as a package because you pushed the button and told the computer to print it. And it's custom tailored for this building and then it's custom tailored for this building with very minor modifications. And I'm hoping that that's going to be the answer for being able to bring the price down a little bit for folks, but it's still labor. Yeah. You still got a lot of labor time on the ground that's going to just keep that price up there. And eventually we may see an improvement on the, the timing. Uh, load test weights were an issue. Um, at this point in time, the best argument that you can have is with our friends at BDS, Mike Wartwitz in, in particular. You've got to convince him that the 200 pounds per square foot is not an appropriate load quantity, that it should be reduced to whatever. Uh, they were designed at 100. The national, national standard was 100. You know, so use that. We've got to get them convinced first. They are the engineers of record from the city. And Mike Schaaf is the one that's handling that. I've got a fire marshal who was uh, very much attached to that, and that's why it got put in here. Um, he is the fire marshal still, so if you can convince Mike and his crew, you might be able to get them to convince the fire marshal. Well, Mike down at the development office, uh, his case is that, that he's not going to say you can take exception to the building bill. So what he's pushing is just saying that if you want me to sign off that meets current building code, even though the building's 100 years old, that's all he's doing. I'm not trying to defend him, I'm just saying I there's so that's debates with him, and that's all he said. If the city wants to say you want to be current building code, tell me, and I will do what the city wants to do. But that's he just doesn't want to hang out his department. Yeah, and I, I, I hate to say it, but it may actually be something that more politically 
the group of folks that are working in this alongside of you, you all come together and develop a unified voice to deal with the city, and you may have to go over his head to the council. It may be a political football to get some of this stuff straightened out. But basically, that is a trip point that's there right now. There are time extensions available. It's not laid out in here that it's available because that's something that's come about since this got posted. Uh, just because we're going, whoa, 200 of them wood frame building. This is going to be interesting. Uh, I want to be across the street with my good camera taking the pictures, uh, maybe video, get our TV crew out there. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, we've got to get some answers to it and we're relying on you guys to get those answers. We're also relying on you guys as the coordinators for any given job and the people working it to be able to say, I know that the fire marshal's office is looking for this, 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 and this. We're looking for that thing to be looked at closely and making sure that all the connections are fixed. Even the stupid one where the handrail comes down and returns to the top of the handrail for the guardrail around the fire escape dock. Don't be skipping those. If you have to break the stairs free for your load testing, make sure you reconnect those stairs. There should be those U-bolts holding the deck down to the main support rods. If they're missing, find something that's going to work to replace them because that's what we're looking for. Stainless steel nuts, bolts, and washers, yes. Uh, we don't want to see the old galvanized stuff out there. We've, we've shied away from that long enough now. We're saying, no, stainless is available. Let's go with the stainless. Then we don't have to question the integrity of that particular fastener for a long time to come. 25 years may become that target mark. Uh, it's not officially in our system yet, but I think that's something that uh, the younger folks in this group might actually be around long enough to see become an issue and get clarified that way. If I may add just one, one more thing to your permit. Nationwide now, not just here. Nationwide, to save some money for vendors, you have a $10,000 job, 4,000 of it is paint, your permit is only for $6,000. Number two, if you're maintaining a fire escape and you walk into the building department, you send your representatives in there, your engineer, or you, you walk in with your license, and you speak with a building official, and you say, hey, what are you doing? Hey, I'm scraping and painting this fire escape. Look, you don't need a permit for that. Hey, great. I'm also changing the fasteners on this fire escape. Are you changing, you changing anything structurally? You're adding a platform? No. no. Oh, you don't need a permit for that either. Got it? As soon as you start touching things structurally or start removing things structurally or start adding things structurally, it triggers a permit. So right now, you have another one that you got to need to get this line. So save some money on a $100,000 job, 40 grand of it is paint. You're only going to only gonna pull a permit if one is triggered for 60 grand. If you're changing fasteners, there's no permit. In, in nine out of 10 cases, even after we send in our representatives or we go and try to pull a permit, the same official, and it's, always, it's not always unification behind the thing, the guy goes, you don't need a permit for that. Got it? And then, All of a sudden you ask for a card, because you're gonna need yeah. that card on your truck in case somebody comes out and says, Lord, say, I went to pull one, they said no. Low testing now has a six hundred or nine hundred dollar start fee on that. What is that? I believe it's six hundred. Six hundred bucks just to apply the process of starting the low testing. So, engineers, vendors, and everybody, be aware that there's a there's a, a gray area that by sending your licensed vendor in or your engineer in to speak with people in Portland, Corvallis, and Eugene. Not everybody has the same standard, and some will say, if you're painting it anywhere in the nation, there's no permit needed. You're changing fasteners in the nation, it's subject to the, on, on a call, a case-by-case -case basis with the, 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 um, the building inspector you find there that day. And he may say, if you're just changing fasteners and you're not swapping out material and you're not extending a balcony, there is no permit, but you start, structurally touching this. So you may need to speak with your guy to say, when have we reached that? So if this is a spot repair, if you're doing a full scrape, spot fastener, you know, swap out. And then it's gonna to go to a load test. Is there a permit needed for that first phase of scraping and painting, minus swap out of the bolts? And within our jurisdiction, definitely make contact with DDS, Bureau of Development Services. Get the name and phone number of the individual you talk to, and if they're, especially if they're telling you no permits needed. Got it. Document that. Document. Keep that with your record. Our guys will probably be looking for that information or whoever's in my position will be doing that follow-up because 
if they don't require a permit, what do we do with the affidavit now? But by the way, it's it started our system. Yeah, it started with an well, engineer. How's it going to get in there? But it started with an engineer report. So this is not being done. He's already got an engineer's report to start this all off. So even before any repairs are being done, there was an initial examination that he already got. So whether or not there's a permit pull for, for painting and a, a fastener swap up, he's already well aware of this project because he already got the engineer's report from the beginning. I'm just trying to say to you guys that sometimes you're pulling permits on the full cost of the project and you can save some permit fees because painting is never a permanent a permittable uh, activity. And you can save hundreds of dollars on your permit fees if you take out, you, you know, you have to break it out in, 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 a, in your contract. So that helps. But you, need, you guys need to get that because there are some people that they automatically do the process and there's some people saying, you know what, I'm painting and I'm changing some fasteners. I've asked the right people. I have a card and they said there's no permit needed. And he gets, he gets made aware of that, that Joe Smith said that what, for what I see on this report from this engineer that told me, yeah, if they say no permits needed, go ahead. But as soon as you start extending a balcony, creating a catwalk on a roof, sometimes that triggers for that portion only. So here's a $100,000 job, $25,000 is this new catwalk over the roof. Guess what you're pulling your permit for? $25,000. Guess who's watching the whole show? The engineer. Guess who he's in contact with? This guy. Guess who he's satisfying? Guess who he's satisfying? Uh, guess who he's satisfying for the code? The building inspector, because he's just collecting a fee for the, for the activity and making sure you're building the catwalk to code. Guess who gets the final ref, uh, certification when everything is all said and done? Guess who does the final walkthrough? Guess who then comes in and signs off the building permit, if there is one, that has nothing to do with the certification? The building official. Guess who collects all these fees and makes all the money? Them. Guess who does all the work? And, and that's another problem is that a lot of times this is, I don't know if this is permittable or if this is a fee structure that could be, because I think what's got happening here, there's a hijacking going on by the building department, but there's not enough competition actually, coming back. It was, it was a ping pong. We actually took the ping pong ball and served that sucker across the net to them. Uh, most well, of the they had the engineers for reviewing the submitted plan. May I ask you, that was the International Fire Code of 2012 coming back your way, does that change anything now? Say that the, the adult the report must be sent to the, to the fire official? It's actually, the affidavit is being sent to us as well as that. So when you guys are kicking in the paperwork, kick it to both departments, and that way you know you've got yourself covered, and if somebody loses it, it's going to be annoyed or the other. And hopefully it'll end up in both. The, the design of our program is it will reside in their permit system and be in our, our computer system. So that's all there. Um, any other questions right now at this point? A lot of information is on nationalfirescapeassociate.org. So. I want to say thank you very much for coming and, and participating in this thing today. For our guys, you know where to find me. Yeah. That's, that's there. For you folks, I got my card here. If you want a card, feel free. And uh, you can also track me down through the department. So thank you guys. Thank you. Pick on him too. He's got me. I'll be here for a bit. <laughs> and I've got a question for Cisco and Ross Dudas. Let me get back up. You, you know a place nearby. Can you get this thing? Yeah. And it actually goes on, it goes on, your, on, your, on your phone. Is it, is it a 19? Yeah. If anybody has any questions, feel free to give us a call. Uh, we're out of Boston, and we have uh, structural engineers on staff. So we have people like in Boston, New York. I'm a fire escaper stand in that I'm, I'm registered in New York, not New York, but in California. I'm a direct four fire escape inspector, and then we call it fire escape engineer, like a building engineer, like a train engineer. So we're, we're robbing the sound engineer, okay? But uh, even on our website, we actually use that as a state thing. We're not a structural engineer, we're a fire escape engineer based on the fact that train engineer is there. But, um, it's, it's, um, but what we use is nationwide, like I'm in Missouri right now, so I have to, use a, a local, I have to find a local guy. I was in Iowa, and I was trying to find a local guy to do a sign off in Waterloo on a 10 story. Couldn't find anybody. I had to fly my guy out of uh, Seattle to Kansas City. Same day thing, drive up there, bless the 10 story. You come back up and fly, I come back to Seattle. Because Fire escape is animal. People just 
you know, yeah. they're better than put their, their signature on yeah. 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 You guys have a card? I'll card of mine. And, um, and, um, and kind of but we'd love to share information uh, nationwide with a lot of different people. So if you guys are looking to share, collaborate. Steps between the balconies. You've got this as a Yeah, it is. not part of the
Thank you. And uh, if you have a card, um, I think I'm going to have to start. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's the same place. No. <laughs> did you, you, you've been there in the vaccine all this time, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did, you make, did you sneak it after the class started? No, no, no. No, I, oh, I no, he, was, he was just kind of quiet with it. <laughs> let, me, let me start wrapping this up. Oh, yeah. Um, so you said you had a oh, you want to look at. Yeah. So, so what you think? Stu, what you think of the, of the show? I think we did pretty good. We probably could have cut the time or put in more breaks. No. <laughs> yeah, it always happens. So, yeah. You know, and the other thing, I, I really appreciate the heat being nice and warm in here. Is that, yeah, we should have given people pillows. Because <laughs> they, you know, sadly, the, uh, you know, the what kicked that stairway door was open. That's not just so people can find a pillow. <laughs> That's a concept. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did Rob escape already? No, he's still here. Yeah. You know, we're going to go have lunch. Uh -huh. I got Sean here too. We're going to go have lunch. Portland Rose apartment stuff down in Hamburg. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I got, I got, uh, Sean's and, and, and Robert. What happened is, Robert's Sean's Robert's 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 uh -huh. um, I don't know if you remember, but the Eugene thing, that whole, that, that one guy that got uh, reprimanded by the, by, the, um, by the engineering board? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, well, here's what happened. Uh, it spooked, it spooked Robert. Because, you know, the, you know, the board that came down to the final saying, even when you do all these things, and you do all these chains of passers, we still, we still think you should look test everything anyway. You know, like, you're supposed to reverse engineer it and look at it.